All right, guys, I just bought this um, tool from Lowe's. It's the Cobalt 6-inch variable speed brushless cordless polisher. I paid $139, and it's the bare tool only. You do not get a battery or a charger, and this is for their 24-volt system. Now, this is the item number 1694006, model number KPO. 124B-03 and this particular type is a random orbiter polisher or also known as a DA dual action now we'll take a look at what you get again it's the bare tool no batteries no charger which is this you get the handle a side handle that goes in either the right or left side you get a allen wrench to use these bolts allen head bolts that you can use to put this bail handle on should you want to use that then you also get a wrench which you would use to take off this backing pad and then you also get three uh, polishing pads that you see here now the three pads that you get are the yellow one which is for heavy cut compound the blue is for light polishing and the black is to use for finishing wax and sealants so let's take a look at the tool first your standard cobalt blue you have rubberized surfaces here in the black all the black areas and back here is your battery compartment and the battery sets horizontal with the unit and not vertical up and down to it so this way as you're using it the battery isn't this way where it could hit the vehicle or whatever work you're, you're using it on there's your trigger switch with a locking button and it does have variable speed dial here to dial in the RPMs to match the work now this base unit does come off and I'll show you that that's why they give you the wrench and this particular unit was made uh, 10 of 20 now it is stated in the specs that you can polish a full-size car with just one 4 amp hour battery and guys this works with the ultimate output battery that you see on the tool or the extended run battery that you see here separate so let's take a look at this uh, variable speed trigger and the selector that you have here now <clears throat> you can control the uh, RPMs between 0 to 3800 and in each range you have variable speed but the good thing is that if you push all the way from 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 you can lock it in and you don't have to worry about holding this down you can push it up all the way and you have five speeds that are set just by holding the trigger in all the way and then if you want it to be variable then you can push it in a little bit at a time so you'll see that I have this, this set at uh, dial at number one and so when I turn this on I push part way You'll 
see it's variable, and then when I max out the switch, it stays at whatever RPMs number one is selected for. Number two. Number three. Number four. And number five. Okay, I want to show you now, as I stated, this is a uh, random orbital polisher. And the orbit, or the oscillation, is 8 millimeters. Which means that if you have a drill and everything, everything's straight, it's drilling on center. There's no a wobble to it. This will have a wobble of 8 millimeters, um, or 0 0.315 inches rounded, which is just about 5 sixteenths of an inch. So let me turn this thing on. And you can see, see the wobble? So, it, turn, it rotates, I'm moving this by hand now, it rotates on an axis, but then it's got a thing in here and I'll show you when I take this off, that causes it to uh, orbit. Now that'll help with uh, swirl marks, not, not uh, leaving them. The, random, the randomness of the motion will allow for that. Now, if you want to take this backing disc off, that's what this wrench is for. It's a thin, so it gets in there. Now, I'll show you. When you, when you go to take it off, you've got to look in here, and you'll see where this, um, uh, I'll show you when I take it off. You want to have this wrench get in there, and you've got to be on the opposite side, and I'll show you. So I got in here. Now I'm on the, um, the nut in there, or the spindle which uh, is a hex and then I'm going to take this off so I simply rotate it counterclockwise and now this backing plate is off so that if you want to clean it replace it you can do that now this does have like a fiber washer so you don't want to lose that I believe that's on there basically as a spacer so that it doesn't uh, seize metal to metal so it doesn't seize on there, it would be my first guess. And this is what I was talking about, is when you, you want to look in there, you won't be able to get the wrench in, obviously, with this uh, weighted part here, which causes it to uh, do the uh, random orbit, uh, 8 millimeters. So you just look in there and make sure that you're on the opposite side of that, then you can put the wrench in there. And so the spindle thread size that you see on the backing uh, pad and that uh, is uh, on your spindle is a standard 5 16 inch diameter by 24 threads per inch. So you can go anywhere and buy any 6 inch backing pad. You don't have to go 
Uh, it, it's not something that's like a, what I would call a bastard size. So while we have that backing pad off, I thought I'd show you how this uh, operates. So you can see that this is off center so the pad will rotate on on here because you see that that moves okay so your pad is actually your backing pad your your will, will move in a uh, concentric to that but then that is offset by eight millimeters so as this goes around, that's what gives you your dual action, or your random orbit. Now to show you better, I've taken off this, what I'll call like a counterweight, on the opposite side. That's been taken off, and... Now, when I put my hand on this spindle, now watch. Let me slow it down to number one. Let me slow her down. You'll see. You'll see that this is actually eight millimeters offset. So it's creating little circles around this I wish it would go a little slower but uh, I think you can see what I'm talking about all right next let's let's look at one of the handle options you have you could put this on, right or left. So whatever would give you the best control or feel for the job you're doing. Now the second option they give you is this bail handle, which is the one I like the most, and which is the one I'll be using. And that attaches on both sides of the unit. And I want you to make note of how that's cut. The handle has those same cuts on both sides. Now the reason for that, it allows for like what I would call a click stop so that you can click it into various three different positions and lock it down on the unit. So here's what I'm talking about. You have one, two, and three. Straight up, to the side, or to the back side like that. Now I'm going to keep mine like this. I feel that you have more control, you're more a little bit past the center point here, and you can keep the weight of this unit, you can, for me, control it better in that position. Now to put this on, they give you a six millimeter Allen wrench. I'm gonna use my own Bondus, that is a ball head. I've got the one side already on, so now we'll do the other side. Yeah, let me line it up. It slipped on me. There it is. The ball head definitely 
works better on this other side. Here it's more open. Give her a nice snug. So this is how I will be using it and keeping it because like I said with that forward of the spindle, here's the center of your spindle. You can see that that handle is just a little further of the center. I just feel that I've got a little bit better control of the unit. So I could either allow the weight of it or lift it up and as I'm using it, but uh, to each his own. All right, guys, so now we're ready to put our backing pad on. Make sure you've got your fiber washer in there. So now we're ready to put on one of the uh, polishing pads. Now, as stated, you have the yellow, and that is for removing severe oxidation, abrasions, and scratches with abrasive compounds. Your blue pad is for heavy polishing with cleaning waxes, one-step polishers, or all-in-one products. And the black pad is for finishing surfaces to remove swirls and apply thin coats of wax, sealants, and glazes. All right, so I'm going to be putting on the black just for a uh, pad for wax. And this uses what they call a hook and loop system. So that when you put it on the disc, allows it to stick. And when you want to take it off, just pull it off like that. Now you definitely want to make sure that you don't contaminate these. Keep them clean so you don't uh, get dirt contamination onto your, the project you're working on. All right guys, I want to do a demonstration, uh, but it is winter, it's very cold today. I'm not going to be doing my car. Uh, what I thought I would do, this is a uh, four drawer tool cabinet from uh, Craftsman that I got at Lowe's. It was a regular $170. They were clearancing it for $85. I ended up getting it for $50. So I'm going to be using this for a project uh, to put some accessories in a mobile cart to put some accessories of my uh, telescope equipment in. And what I'll do is I'll pull this wooden top up and we'll just do the metal here. We'll put some polish on it to see how this thing works. But first, what I want to do is address some comments that I found on Lowell's website about this particular uh, polisher. So here you see I'm on Lowell's website. And yesterday when I was at uh, Lowell's, I hadn't seen this tool before. So I didn't know if it was brand new. I asked one of the guys there. He didn't know. So I thought, well... So I just looked on my phone, and um, they had some reviews, so I thought, hey, let me take a look at them. They looked kind of low. So, if we go down here to this review, and this was done December 7th of 20, and this is what uh, he says, sad to write this. Because I was very excited for, for this tool. I have four other 24 Max tools 
and I've been very happy with with each of them in the market for a cordless polisher but didn't want to spend 250 plus from Milwaukee or, or DeWalt each of my other 24 max tools are a great value for the price so I had high hopes unfortunately this polisher simply doesn't work it bogs down under its own weight on flat surfaces using a pro 5050 pad now I'm not sure what that is or a URO the pad doesn't spin and basically smears your polish slash cut cream around and doesn't have enough power to work correctly much better performance from a corded bower for a little less money really too bad here's another one December 23rd of 20 let me start by saying I've been a cobalt fan for years and was excited to see this cordless DA polisher for a bargain price unfortunately my package arrived 13 days late to begin I purchased this for light work like spreading sealants glazes and waxes yet this polisher will not even rotate the pad to perform these extremely minor tasks under its own weight it'll smear the product of your choice which you can do by hand very disappointing results from a reputable company another one December 11 of 20 I really wanted to like this tool problem is it bogs down so much that it does nothing the cordless grinder looks similar and very powerful if the throw was increased I believe this tool would have been amazing hopefully they revise it then it would be great there's another one December 27th of 20 I really wanted to like this tool I have a lot of other cobalt 24 volt tools but like others have stated it does not work it does not spin or orbit unless you have on high speed and and getting and get spinning before putting on surface then you can apply no pressure or it will just vibrate I hope I can still return it definitely does not work even with six amp hour battery do not waste your money and one thing I just wanted to mention also is that uh, I wouldn't use I'm not going to be using this polisher to remove heavy oxidation on a vehicle what I do uh, obviously you wash the car make sure it's clean and dry then I use this product that glide by nano skin and um, I'll mix it 50 50 so that when I'm using it uh, it's got it's got that 50 50 mix and then I use these uh, sponges I don't use clay bar Th these things work really good I did a video too showing but I use the fine grade the auto scrub sponge by nano skin fine grade and then you use the glide as the lubricant and uh, these things here you can wash them they hold up very well uh, after so many uses you know you, you do have to replace them but uh, they, they do hold up so like I said the purpose that I'm going to be using this polisher for is just the application of wax and what I've done guys is I put a mark on that backing pad and I've got it on number one so let me go ahead and turn it on without any pressure to that pad Okay, so the top's been cleaned. Put just a little bit of uh, wax, the liquid wax, and eh, quite a bit there. Put a little of that on. Now I'm going to have that mark right here let's see what happens
I don't know if that'll show up on the video, but it did it did turn slow, but it did rotate. And it did appear to spread the wax. Okay, guys, I've been fooling around with this off camera, and I'm finding that three and four work pretty good, and actually been doing a pretty good job. This is on number three. I'm glad I got this tool part top that's forming on. Now if I really press, you can see it slows down. That'll kind of give me an indication I'm, I'm pushing too hard. Let the tool do the work. Now let me go to four. Now let me start that on the uh, on the uh, metal. Now I'm going to push hard. Let the pressure the tool do it now. This is number five. I like three and four. Back to three. Well, there you have it, guys. I probably got the smoothest uh, tool cart top uh, this side of the Mississippi.